candidates who are coming here to present for us. Um, and I mean, I'm going to each come up individually um, and hopefully uh, introduce themselves uh, to us if they haven't already introduced themselves here to you tonight. Um, and hopefully talk for five, no more than ten minutes, and uh, you know, take questions if they so choose to do that. Um, uh, the first um, candidate we're going to hear from is a candidate for U.S. Senate. His name is Peter Schiff, and I'd appreciate if you'd come on up. I am a local businessman. I own a brokerage firm in uh, Westport, Connecticut. I do uh, uh, retail investing, money management, investment banking, and I have offices uh, in six states. I was born in New Haven, but I relocated uh, back to Connecticut. I was out in California most of my life. I came back here uh, in 2004, worth your sense. And unfortunately, you know, because of the, the policies that have been coming out of Washington, both from the Federal Reserve and from Congress, the White House, I've been forced to invest most of the money that my clients would trust in my care outside the United States. I've understood that the policies pursued by the Federal Reserve have been debasing the value of our money, the U.S. dollar. As a result, in order to protect myself from the fall of the value of the dollar and my clients, I have to invest outside the United States. By keeping interest rates too low, we've chased investment capital out of the country. And it's not going to come back if we maintain artificially low interest rates. I've also understood that high taxes and high regulation on U.S. businesses have rendered our businesses and our companies less competitive than businesses in other countries. And so I've been, I've been forced to invest outside the United States rather than in the United States. And while this has been a, a very, very profitable strategy to have pursued for the last decade, I would much rather have been investing in the United States, in American businesses, and rather than, than standing back as a private citizen and watching the government undermine our economy, I've chosen to, to run for office to try to put a stop to it. Now, I, I made a, a name for myself uh, in the investment world forecasting the economic crisis of 2008. And I forecast it to a T. There's, there's really nothing that I missed in any aspect of the economy. I laid it out cold in a book that I wrote called Crash Proof had a profit from the coming economic collapse that was published in February of 2007. I was going around the country making speeches going back to 2004 in front of all sorts of organizations warning about an impending housing collapse. I was talking about all the fraud that was going on in the mortgage market, how the Federal Reserve had inflated the housing bubble, that when it burst it would take down the entire financial system with it, that it would bankrupt major financial institutions including Fannie and Freddie. I laid out exactly what was going to happen and why it was going to happen. And of course when I initially did that, it was usually met with laughter. Uh, somebody put together a, a group of my clippings from Fox and CNBC and CNN and uh, put it on YouTube. And the, one of those ones called Peter Schiff was right, if you have time to look at it on, on, on YouTube, had over 1.6 million hits. And what made that video so compelling was that everybody was laughing at me as I was predicting what, of course, now we all know happened. And the reason that I was alone on Wall Street, you know, or basically alone, certainly I was alone on television, uh, in my ability to forecast the events that took place because I understood them. I understood what was causing them. And unfortunately, I understand that everything that the government has done thus far, both under President Bush and now under President Obama, in the name of solving the problems, has actually made them worse. You see, the reason our economy is so screwed up is because the government stimulated it in the first place. It's the stimulus that's got the economy sick, because the stimulus is toxic. <coughs> Government stimulus is keeping interest rates too low and running big deficits. And all we get as a result of that stimulus is reckless spending and reckless gambling. We, we convinced Wall Street, Wall Street took all this cheap money from the Fed and gambled with it. American individuals took all the cheap money and spent it. And we had this phony economy, this phony prosperity that was destined to collapse. And now we're doing the same thing. We didn't learn anything uh, from the experience of Greenspan and Bush. Uh, um, Obama and Bernanke are doing exactly the same thing that they did, only on a bigger scale. They inherited a bigger problem, 
because of the Bush stimulus and the Greenspan stimulus. But now their stimulus is even bigger. And of course, the politicians are never going to try to solve a problem. Their only problem is how to get reelected. And so to them, a solution is how do we postpone the pain? You know, the politicians are always criticizing you know, business for being short-sighted, criticizing Wall Street. But they're the most short-sighted of all because they can only see as far as the next election. That's why we need to send somebody to Washington who is not a politician and who doesn't care about getting reelected because career politicians can't solve these problems. They, they involve thinking long-term and understanding that sometimes it has to get worse before it can get better. We're never gonna have a real economic recovery until the government gets out of the way and allows a real recession to run its course. As painful as it is, the recession is where the economy is cured from a disease that in government infects it with when it inflates these bubbles. Our economy is, is all screwed up because it's all malinvested. Asset prices are too high. Real estate prices are too high. They have to come down. The government can't try to artificially levitate them by keeping interest rates at zero. That's going to crush the dollar. You know, we're not going to be able to have any, any employment in this country if there are no savings. Jobs come from, from, uh, from, from productivity, they come from capital, they come from savings. We're not going to have that if we have a, a monetary policy that's trying to reinflate asset bubbles. We have to let our economy restructure. You know, right now the government is trying to claim credit for the TARP working because you have several of these uh, Wall Street firms like J.P. Morgan and Morgan Stanley and, and Goldman that are, that are paying back the TARP money and they think it's some kind of victory. The only reason they're paying this money back is number one, the government changed the accounting rules so the firms can now pretend that a lot of the assets that are polluting their balance sheets have a lot more value than they really do. And because the Federal Reserve gave these banks money for free, they were able to take all this money and gamble with it. And they placed highly risky trades all over the world, and they made a ton of money, and they're able to pay back the TARP and give themselves record bonuses, but they're still taking all this risk. Ultimately, every one of these financial firms is going to go broke again because of what they've done to generate these profits, and the government's going to bail them out again. And they know that. It's heads they win, tails the taxpayer loses, and we have to stop this. And now, what does the government want to do? They're trying to pretend that the TARP isn't costing as much as it is because they're getting some of the money back, and now they want to spend it on jobs programs, as if the money's actually there. The money has to be borrowed from the Chinese. It has to be borrowed from Japan. There's no money there. There's no money to spend. And when the government tries to spend money, they don't create jobs. They destroy jobs. They create some jobs that are unproductive, but they destroy productive jobs in the process. Because the government doesn't have any resources. They only have resources that they take from the private sector. And when they do that, they make the, set the private sector less efficient. And the government doesn't understand that we don't want jobs. We want productivity. We want purchasing power. Just having a job and not earning any money, there's nothing, there's nothing good about that. I mean, we can all have jobs but be broke. Right? Everybody in the Soviet Union had a job. What good was it? All the slaves had jobs. I mean, it's easy to have a job. The difficulty is to have a job that gives you a paycheck that means something. And we're not going to get that if the government supplies the jobs because they pay for it by printing money. I'm already running out of time. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, so we need, we, we, we need to elect somebody to Washington that understands how capitalism works, how markets work, that understands that the government is not the solution to our problems, the government's the cause of our problems. And people think that the economic crisis is over, that we're, we're recovering. It's not over. It's barely just begun. All we've seen so far is the tip of an economic iceberg. The rest of this monstrosity is going to surface over the next few years. And I think it's very important that somebody be in Congress that understands why and understands what needs to be done. Because all, they do, all they're doing right now is throwing gasoline on fire. But they don't realize that. They think they're going to put the fire out with gasoline. But all they're going to do is make it bigger. We have to find a way to educate the senators, the congressmen, the president. They don't listen to me in the private sector. It doesn't matter how many things I get right. I can get call after call after call right. I'm, I've been